Hey guys, what is going on? Deboke here once again. I am going to be doing a little different video today where I wanted to go ahead and go through some of my favorite memories in MapleStory because, well, it's the 16th year anniversary for Maple and I thought we'd just go walking down memory lane a little bit together and talk about some of my favorite good times in MapleStory, which uh, I'm, I'm curious about you guys too. If you want to tell some of your stories in the comments, that'd be awesome because I love hearing about Maple Story memories and stories. So I will be going through mine. Um, I think this video is gonna be like top five Maple Story memories, but I'm not gonna be going through them in any order. They all have like an equal weight to it, so I can't really put one um, over the other, I should say. This is my Bowmaster, by the way. I made him a really long time ago, and I wanted to go and travel around this memory road with uh, Debo King here because Archers was one of my first class. Unfortunately, not this one, but um, yeah, Archers were the my first and probably still favorite class in Maple Story. First, though, I want to go ahead and get dressed for the occasion. I mean, we, we got to get kind of nostalgic here, so that's why I'm in Lith Harbor. I just want to bring ourselves back a little bit, back to the roots. I think this brown skull cap is um, is pretty rooty also. Now where's the weapon store? Oh, they don't have bows here. <laughs> I need to go to Hennessy's really quick to get myself a nice good old, I think it's the compound, the compact bow, the blue one. Oh, it's the war bow. Excuse me, the war bow. All right, there we go. Now we're dressed for the occasion. I am all back into my noob clothing and let us go down memory lane now. Hmm. Which one should I start with first? I, I would say the one that comes to mind right now is the one in Forest of Golems, which I don't think exists anymore. The map was called Forest of Golems, and we usually called it Fog. It used to be in Sleepy Wood, um, but I don't think it's here anymore. It, it was the Golem map, Stone Golems, and I think they moved it to this little hidden area down here, which I can still go ahead and tell my memory while visiting this map because it kind of has the same layout here, which is pretty cool. Forest of Golems. Let's lay yeah, out. Let us pretend that this is the Forest of Golems map. Just keep that in mind. I probably can't access a lot of the same maps that um, that I'm thinking about, but the layout here, I'm glad it's kind of the same because it served a pretty big purpose. Uh, Forest of Golems was very popular to be trained at, and what was really cool about Forest of Golems is that you needed pretty much like four people to train efficiently on the map. So one person would take the top two layers usually, and it was usually a warrior class because back then the range characters couldn't shoot um, up close at the, the mobs when they were too close to them, you'd just be like meleeing them and it was really annoying. The middle one, you had one, you know, ranged or whatever, another party member. And the very bottom was, it was like this, where it was kind of pretty stretched out here. So you could even have two people back then training in the same in the same level here in the bottom. So I was running with a group of people that we would train with, like almost nightly, I would say, after we were done training, like after a few hour training grind session or whatever, you know, we were kind of burnt out. We just wanted to chill. We would actually clear out the whole bottom floor like this and until no more mobs spawned here. And what we would do is we would have story time and we would just sit down all in a group on the very bottom floor and we would tell stories. And it was pretty cool because, you know, it was like the setting, the, the map was pretty dark in the background and it just kind of felt like you were done farming a dungeon or a cave, like exploring with your friends. And then you were sitting around like a campfire, just like unwinding for the night and telling stories and uh, relaxing and resting up for the next day of training, I guess. That was really fun. You know, it was, it was really cool being able to bond and just experience that. Also, I just want to mention, I think I've told probably most of my memories and videos in the past so for you guys that's been following my my youtube channel for a while you know while i hit the, in these maps i sometimes talk about it you guys might be hearing repeated stories here but um I, I just wanted to put it into one video i think just like all my memories i think that'd be pretty cool so hopefully don't mind the little retails here uh, <laughs> throughout some of my memories the next one i wanted to talk about are well it was a hidden land of wild boars i think it was like down in Perion somewhere but the map is gone but I'll just go to the boar map. This map is completely different. I hope I can still explain it and talk about it well because it was a pretty small map. It was like right off of the stumps map too. You'd go into the stumps map here and there was like a little hidden door right in the middle 
of like the mountains where you'd go inside and it was like a really small two platform map and it held wild boars back then but for the example sake i will go ahead and be in the wild boar land here um, because these boars whenever i see them i think the memory triggers very easily so these mobs just a little bit of a background history they used to be level 30 okay so they're or somewhere around there, but they used to be pretty low level mobs, either level 30 or 35. Um, you would hit them usually before you even got to second job. It was like your training spot for like your first job for a few levels, I would say. So back then I got into a guild called Slip Away. It was one of my first guilds, it was my brother's guild. And that was probably my first experience of like a guild family. We had like a co-owner, guild owner. His name was Mike. They had to put their mesos together because back then it cost a lot of mesos to start a guild. So this memory revolves around Mike. And his name, in-game name was called Bonk or Alyssa Ann. I knew him as Alyssa Ann. He named his maple character after his daughters, which I thought was really cute and awesome. Um, yeah, and you know, Mike was like this older brother of mine like that's how I kind of felt like I viewed Mike as even maybe almost a dad because he was a dad and uh, you know he was quite older than a lot of us it was just kind of cool to kind of hear his his thoughts and his I don't know just his style of thinking I just really liked to hear his thoughts about anything because I just thought he was so wise and he had a lot of information especially about Maple Story because he just he had like the highest level character he pulled me aside one day in Maple Story and was like Yo, Dave, I, I want to go ahead and tell you a secret, you know, about Maple Story, and it's game changing. And I was like, shoot, okay, like, what is it? So, you know, the hidden street with the wild boars? And I was like, yeah, like, I, you know, I go there for the weighted earrings and, you know, train there from like level 20 to 25 or whatever. He said, you want to stay there until level 71. And I was like, what? level 71 you want to stay there from level 20 to 71 because back then you didn't get xp reduction for if mobs were lower level than you or anything like that and he was telling me look these guys they drop some good stuff they drop leather they drop weighted earrings and you know the materials that these boars drop are actually very valuable but not only that is the spawn rate for the boars and how much xp you get and the map size is just way more efficient it's the best map in the game you should always want to be training here and nowhere else he, he was like really set on that you know i mean i didn't believe it was the best map in maple story at the time i there's always better maps out there depending on your class and so forth but it just made so much sense to me back in the day so i remember just grinding at wild boars <laughs> until 70 i just found it so bizarre and it was like so interesting that someone took the time i i didn't really think that deeply about maple is like he's calculating how many mobs he was killing at the time you know per hour how much xp the mobs were giving and he was doing tests and this is again before battle analysis was out and you know just kind of basic stuff that you would think like oh that's just basic information you know of course the kitchen now spawn rates it just makes the world of difference on the map size and things like that but i think that was the turning point of when i started to think about that kind of stuff you know back then i was just like oh this mob's giving me 500 xp I'm going to hit it, even though just one mob spawns in the whole map, I was like, this is probably the best mob because it just gives me the most XP on paper. It kind of made me start thinking more deeply about games and, um, yeah, just especially Maple Story on like efficiency and spawn rates and starting to get into things like that, like meso making even also because you're kind of killing two birds with one stone there good training and then you're able to make good mesos at the same time so that was probably a really impactful memory sorry i think that one took a while oh i gotta speed it up here <laughs> the next memory i want to talk about is cash shop or not so no, no no not cash shop the next memory i want to talk about is free market free market was a very special place to me i i think this Oh, they took away all the rooms. It's kind of sad that they took away Free Market. I think this was probably one of my favorite parts about Maple Story. Uh, just being able to like set up your shop and sell items. I used to love to sell things and I think it was FM room 13, which was like the first, it was like right here at the third level of Free Market. And it was like the Pyrion map. It was the uh, the Pyrion free market. And I love selling there because every shop 
kind of felt like a door spot in there because the way the map kind of was laid out and you were able to sell a lot I thought from there. I love just sitting in my shop and talking to people like as they would enter my shop I would type to them or I would have my friends sit in the shop with me and like pretend we were bargaining about a really good item even though the item was really trash but like my friend was like hyping it up when people would walk in copy and pasting our same conversations over and over. I remember this one time where we got super excited because it worked you know this this buyer came in and my friend was hyping up I, I forget what it was it was like either like weighted earrings or some really like low grade item I amped up the price for like a few mil mesos when it was only supposed to be like a few thousand probably like ten thousand or something um and few mil was like crazy right so my friend was like really like amping up this like two mil item and he was going off about it and you know we were like pretending to argue back and forth and then the you like this another buyer comes in and just bought the item right away and then we started freaking out like in chat a little too soon because the buyer was still in the shop and <laughs> we were so excited we forgot that he was still in there and he got really really mad and I think I got defamed and you know he was like really harassing me for a bit <laughs> felt super bad but I we were just like so excited that it worked so selling things was probably definitely one of my favorite memories in MapleStory just the whole trading system in MapleStory is was probably some, something that was like very very special to me what memory are we on fourth memory okay fourth memory I feel weird talking about my exes in a way but this was where I met my first maple girlfriend <laughs> the straw training dummies also infamously known as the STDs <laughs> um, this is actually the exact map they didn't change it so I'm pretty happy about that so I met my ex-girlfriend on maple story and that was probably one of my first most serious relationships uh, her name was Tammy and we dated and lived together for about seven years and we met here we met right here on this map I was an archer and she was a thief and we were about level 50 or so and we somehow came onto this map at the same time so we both were like about to leave the map because we were like oh you know we don't want to be KSing and usually this map is good for one person so we both came on this map and we were both hitting but we weren't talking to each other we weren't KSing each other but we didn't leave we like both came on this was a very popular map back in the day um, so right here on this flagpole was actually like the halfway line so what would happen is I was on the left side and I would hit all the way here up to this flagpole and I would never cross it and then I would just go back and hit on the left side like this and then she would do the exact same thing she would come from the, the right side come here and then never cross it and go back during the time like our training we didn't really talk to each other like sometimes when an arrow would stray over, I would say sorry, or if a star strayed over here, she would say sorry. Uh, but that was the extent of it. I don't think we actually even said hi. I was feeling kind of fly back then. I, I just got my NX. I had the cargo pants on with a transparent hat on so you couldn't see my bamboo hat. So I was feeling pretty good. My hair was looking good. And, you know, after we were done training, I like went over there and I was like, hey, you know, can, can I add you? And maybe we could train again sometime. This was actually really fast and it was pretty cool having someone else in the map. And she was like, yeah, you know, like definitely. So every night, because back then we had like the two X cards um, that were at a certain time slot. So your two X card would last for a week and they would only work during the time slots that were on the cards. So we synced up our time slot cards, I guess. And then we trained. We trained here. And this is um, definitely a place where we got to know each other a lot. We started talking a lot on this map. And yeah, we were just hanging out. And that was probably a very... Yeah, that's a very special memory for me. That was like over seven years ago, which is crazy to think about. But I think it's important to know where you come from and special parts in your life, parts that shaped you and helped you grow as a person. And uh, that is something that was very special. I mean, living with someone and dating someone for seven years, it's going to change your life and you're going to grow a lot from it. And I definitely grew a lot from that relationship. And I have this map to thank for. The last memory. So I I have a lot of other ones that I want to tell you guys. But I'm going to just keep this to five. Because I've been rambling on like crazy. So I've talked about this in a few few of my videos. I know for sure. And I leveled up here to, to 200. I think maybe with the Bow King actually. Um, I can't really remember. But I think I leveled up here to 200 for one of my characters. How this map worked. I'll go ahead and break it down. 
to you. Uh, these, this lower platform here was only for the strong big boys, alright? That was like the Dark Knights, the Warriors, even the Thieves because they were so like agile and they had such huge, um, what is it, avoidability that they would just not get hit. It was because these big golems here, these guys would actually one-shot you. They would, they would hit like 13k plus, so you could not survive down here. Um, if you were like an archer or a mage. So this was a very dangerous place. So what would happen is, again, kind of like Forest of Golems, I love this like style of map layouts like that, where you kind of like take platforms. You would have uh, usually a big tanky character or high avo avoidability character here in the bottom layer. On the middle layer, the middle layer you would have either like an archer or an assassin, but usually an archer. This was my place. I always lived right here. And on the very top layer, you would have um, usually a thief. A thief or another really tanky character. Because right here, it would spawn the big golems. I think it was this middle one right here. Yeah, it was this guy. So that big guy. Oh, the back one too. So these two big golems would spawn too. So my job was just sitting down here, unleashing my arrow rain. And I would only hit these two golems. That's it. That was my job is because if I hit this third one back here or this fourth one, it would spawn a big boy and then I'd be screwed because that thing would walk over towards me and it would one shot me. So I'd have to call help if I accidentally like procced this guy. So I was only allowed to kill those two, <laughs> the two front ones. And it was crazy guys like just like how long I've been like just training here and this was like the time fourth job just came out so I was like level 90 or something and these newts were at the level range at the time and I would be training here and I trained here until fourth job and I remember it was just so exciting when I finally got hurricane and that's like kind of like what the memory revolves around is the first time I got hurricane because man this is by far my favorite skill in maple story and it's just the aesthetics of it how you're shooting like a rapid fire arrow like this it's just so cool because I trained with strafe for a really long time and I'm pretty sad because I was looking for it earlier um, they took away strafe that was a really special skill to me um, and you know I use strafe a lot because I was like a single shot skill where it hit like four times I think and then all of a sudden when fourth job came out and they said that bow masters are getting hurricane where you can just shoot like an infinite amount of arrows at rapid fire I was like I had dreams about this skill guys seriously I dreamed about it and I remember in school like on my paper I would draw a hurricane just like waiting for the skill that was really awesome you know just being able to experience hurricane here and I just like seeing this with this background is very nostalgic to me just brings me a lot of good feels and I remember even at a time my party had me hit down here um, because I was able to just do that much more damage with hurricane and I could just kill these big golems and everyone wanted me in the party because of sharp eyes sharp eyes back then was just such a wanted skill to have and you could really notice your damage output with that skill so it was pretty awesome you know I felt like I was a cool kid on the block I'm sorry if I rambled a bit guys <laughs> hopefully you found it interesting and entertaining though um, I would love to hear some of your guys' favorite memories in Maple Story though I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen and check out my video much love guys one love thank you so much this has been Deboki we we'll see you guys later goodbye